This is my magnetic track. I saw these things on, uh, made by other people on YouTube, and I was fascinated by them. And some of the other videos uh, state or imply uh, that these are free energy devices. And so I thought I would investigate myself as to whether or not they were. Now, it does work with repulsion, whereas you have to force it in, and then it shoots out. But the trouble with repulsion is that it uses a lot of energy to force the magnet into the magnetic track. And I question whether or not you were really getting a net energy gain. In other words, this, it, I suspected that this track used more energy to put the magnet in than you were getting out in the repulsion method. When you watch this on your screen, you can't get any idea of the forces, the magnetic forces involved. It seems very easy to use the magnets. Uh, but in real life, when you're here, you can feel the very strong forces of repulsion. And I'll show you, give you some idea of the repulsion forces involved in a moment. I am showing how the magnetic field from the track magnets repels the slider magnet at a distance of five inches. Most people insert the slider magnet right where the track magnets begin but this does not save any energy. My hand muscles overcome the repulsion of the magnetic field and force the slider magnet into the magnetic track where it is shot out the other side. How much energy did my hand use to do this? There is a way to determine this. If I drop a weight straight down, if it is heavy enough, it can pull the sliding magnet into the magnetic track. I know how much weight it takes because I carried out experiments before I made this video. It takes a 10 ounce weight to do the job. The 10 ounce weight has to pull the slider magnet five inches. This means the energy used to force the slider magnet into the magnetic track is 50 inch ounces. The wood cover is put on top of the track because when the dropping weight pulls the sliding magnet slowly through the track, the sliding magnet flips over end to end. The cover prevents this. To determine how much energy the sliding magnet delivers when it is shot out of the magnetic track, I hook the track up to a ballistic pendulum. The weight on the pendulum is the same 10 ounce weight used before. To achieve break even energy use, the sliding magnet must push the pendulum weight completely past 5 inches. This distance is shown by the metal strip. The nail is at the two inch mark. We see the sliding magnet fails to push the pendulum weight completely past the five inch mark. Now what should happen it should knock this back five inches, like that. But it doesn't do that. It only comes about to, and then twists, like that. The twisting doesn't affect the general outcome. If it was hit with enough force, it would still go, even if it twisted, it should be driven back like this, even if it twisted. I did this experiment a dozen times and it was always the same result. The conclusion is, is that it takes more energy to put this slider magnet in than you get coming out. So this would not work as a free energy device. 